Last night I tried to do a live stream show for you and that show was stolen from me. It was stolen by technical problems, bandwidth problems, equipment problems, audio syncing problems, one thing after another. Well, you know what? Right now, right here, we are stealing it back. Hi everyone and welcome to pal to tech I had a whole agenda that I was supposed to do on my live stream. It was supposed to be my first live show. And I even scripted it out. I had demos, I had camera walkthroughs, I had a studio walkthrough to show you, and the video and audio and technical problems were so bad. I think the internet was jammed last night. There were a lot of problems because none of them appeared in my tests. So what I'd like to do is take back that show. I want to show you some of those things that you probably missed last night. Before I do, before I even begin to get into this, I want to say thank you to those viewers that stuck around last night, that were there, that made such nice and supportive comments, that, you know, put up with all those glitches. So without any further ado, we're going to do the show right now. And you know what? It's going to be even better than it was at the live stream. First off, I did a studio tour. Okay, let's do the studio tour. All right, now, first thing I take very seriously with any video that I do is audio. Audio is 60% of the video experience. It really is. It's more important than the video. So I have had a number of my videos, at least two of them so far, where I've put all this work, I've sat down, I've recorded it, I spent an hour doing it, and probably eight hours preparing and getting everything ready. And then at the end, you know what happens? The audio wasn't recorded. There was a problem with the mic. There was a problem with the preamp. There's a problem with something. I learned my lesson. So now what I do, I have two mics. Check it out. I have the Rode NTG3 right here. That is my primary boom mic. And then I also have the Rode Video Mic Pro. So the NT 3G goes into this preamp right here, and the Rode VideoMic Pro goes into the camera. So that's how I do the audio. That way, if one of them fails, I at least have the other. It may be overkill, I don't care. In fact, <laughs> I actually have three mics. There's the third right there. So anyhow, that's how I roll. I have my demo camera, which is connected through this cord under here. It goes all the way into this monitor, which allows, it allows me to do screen demos with a camera while I'm being shot by another camera, see? So I can do that, and it's hooked into an Atomos Ninja 5. I also have a fourth microphone right here, which syncs into the Atomos, and that way, just in case, I have another audio track, and it also makes it easier to sync up in post, okay? So that's the other thing. My primary light is this aperture right here. There it is. I also have this light up here, which kind of shines, whoosh, boom, just to give the background a little more fill. Next, I have a preamp right here. That preamp is for this camera right here, which this is sort of a side camera. It's the camera that I used when I did that uh, video about the YouTube comments and the ink going into the glass. That's the camera. I use it as like a secondary camera. So that's that right there. There's a light for it, which I can control right from here. Boom, really simple. Uh, this is for the live stream that failed and blew up. Oh well. This is the Kupo 40 inch C stand that goes all the way up and then over connected to a Canon ADD. This camera gets overhead shots of stuff that I'm working on. So that's really cool. I have a battery, one of those fake batteries, powering it all the time so I never have to deal and waste time charging the battery. I have a mirror, right, hooked up. See that mirror? So I can then, you know, if I'm, if I'm fiddling with something, I can see what I'm doing. It's a matter of saving every second. When you're putting together a studio or anything, you gotta put little things in place that can shave a second here, a second there, because they all add up. Then this cord connects right to here and goes here, down the C-stand, and it goes into the computer, and boom. 
I realized this is a real utter mess of chords. I'm sorry. I normally am much more organized, I, but I had torn everything apart for the live stream. Honest. I'll clean this place up, I promise. Okay, so here I have an Amaran Aperture light, got sort of a fill. I've got this newer video light that I did the review on a little while back. Here is my X-T3, this is my main cam, and I have a teleprompter. Here's the thing about a teleprompter. I've noticed that when I go off of a teleprompter, the videos are not as good. They're just not as good when you use a teleprompter. Now, a teleprompter can keep you on track, and you can maybe have five bullet items of what your agenda is going to be, but to just read off of a teleprompter kind of, you know, deer in the headlights kind of thing. It's not quite the same thing. So I do use a teleprompter, but nowhere near as much, I think, as other YouTubers might use a teleprompter. Going back around here, this is the Aperture 120D. Beautiful light right there. Here's the whole setup as you can see it. Here's where we have this whole kind of weird room this room was really too small for me to turn into any kind of portrait studio or anything like that. So what I decided to do was keep it as a storage slash uh, product photography area. This is the Finn Homie. Check this out. All right. So you flip that back up like that. Then you turn it on. I'll put a link to this thing below. I think this is one of the best systems that you can get for the price if you want to get into and get started with product photography. You definitely should check this thing out. And no, they're not sponsoring me to say that. I, they don't even know I exist. Okay, moving right along, we've got, you know, more stuff right here. Just these are my video lights, uh, you know, various things that I have, clamps, chargers, Okay, so I also said that I would do some tips. My first tip to you is label everything. I can't stress that enough. So for example, a couple of weeks from now, suppose I come here and I quickly need to get a cable for my newer video light. I open this up. Let's see, I go, okay, it's an AC adapter. Look at that. I immediately know what that is. I immediately, and if you don't have a white pen, you can just label it like this, right? There's my battery grip. All those black kind of AC things look all the same. So label, label, label them. I, honestly, that is a great system. What's not such a great system is probably how I have stuff hanging from the walls, but I just don't have the space. So for example, you know, that's hanging. <laughs> <laughs> that's hanging, that's hanging, that's hanging, you know. Uh, there you go, there's that. There's some more stuff back there. Uh, we have, you know, just all kinds of stuff hanging from the wall because I don't care. I didn't even bother finishing the drywall. I don't care. It's about functionality, doing it fast, doing it functional. Okay, moving along here, we have this wall. We have tripods, we have mounts. Let's see all the mounts you could want. Uh, we got Miltrock stuff, GoPro batteries, uh, Insta360, Fuji batteries, just all that stuff is there. GoPro, 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 the Insta360 stuff, tape for when I need to quickly label something. This is one of the greatest tools in the world. Oh, I'll put a link to that below too. I really like that one. Uh, this is sort of my battery station. Oh, that one's done. Great. Okay, that's my battery station. And there are my batteries and I can see each one. I know where it is. That's the Sony. That goes in the Sony box with the other Sony batteries. Okay, that's easy. And then this is sort of all my other stuff right here. <laughs> Gimbals, this is all Allen wrenches, you know, keeping stuff together. Here's something with SD cards. All right, in here I have like all those auxiliary things that come with an SD card, like the connectors and things like that. But the actual cards I keep in a box within a box. So this tells me, Outbox, these are SD cards that have been erased and they're good to go and they're ready. I can't emphasize enough that if you're only going to have one system for one thing, make sure it's for your SD cards and make sure that you have an inbox and an outbox and they're both separate. So your inbox, 
right? Should be for when you get them off the camera, say you don't have time to quickly go through them, put them in the inbox and that box stays wherever it is you process your SD cards. And then once you've done that, it goes from there into the out box. Somehow have them separate. I <laughs> Trust me, I've learned by mistake. Flash stuff. Uh, okay, all this kind of thing. We have gels for lights, uh, lens cleaning stuff, clamps, let's see, yeah, all kinds of small rig things. Uh, yeah. Let's see, a zoom recorder moving down. Um, we have uh, lights, monitors, mics. Oops, can't even get this stuff out. Okay, we got a uh, road and deity, you know, extra mic, stuff like that. Gimbals up here. All right, so let me show you one more thing again, why labeling is so important. Check this out. See that? I know exactly what cord is plugged into what area, right? So that's, that, that labeling is one tip, okay? The SD card thing is another tip. Here's a third tip I want to show you, and that is the, it's, a, it's an inexpensive way to keep your cords organized. These cheap little clips right here, cheap little clips. What you do is you get these things, and they do any number of awesome things, like check this out. Right. So, for example, I have them organizing these cords right here. I also use them for organizing my headphones on my office desk. I can run cords through them. I use them here also on the side. Seriously, <laughs> these, these things, best kept secret. You can get a box for like five bucks or something. I mean, it is one of the best organizational little things that you can get, but you gotta get the big clips. Okay, so that's what they look like right there. Got a bunch of those. Uh, cigarette lighter. You never know when I'm gonna have to light something on fire, so I keep that in there. Clamps, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that was the studio tour. Now I'm gonna move right into the X-T3 tips and tricks. I'm gonna show you one tip. For those of you that shoot photos in the dark, or perhaps you're shooting a sunrise or sunset photo, particularly sunrises, and you're getting to your location early and you're getting set up and it's pitch dark outside, you wanna set up your camera, you wanna go through the menus, but that blinding, you know, white light of the menu, did you know that the X-T3 has a dark mode? You go into your menu area, into the wrench, screen setup, Go down to the third page. Information contrast adjustment. Change that to dark ambient lighting. Have a look at this. Pretty cool. Now you're not blinded by the light and you're not bothering other people. Let's say you're on a photo shoot and you have other people near you and it's dark. Or maybe you're shooting something in a very, very low light situation and you need to make some adjustments and your client is right there. You don't want this blinding light. So this is a great mode to use. I love it. Now we come to the portion where I show you my Lightroom geotagging way of speeding up how to geotag photos in Lightroom. Here's the thing about that. The X-T2 and X-T3 and upcoming X-T4 cameras don't have an easy way to geotag photos. You know, you can use the Fujifilm app, but I think the Fujifilm app kind of sucks. I mean, it's clunky and I don't use it. Now there are third party apps that can geotag and then they, you get this special file which you have to sync up to Lightroom. Either way, it's still a hassle. There's no easy, simple way to just have your camera out, shoot, 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 not have to monkey with an app, not have to monkey with syncing with anything, and just take the pictures, and then boom, they're on the pictures. It, it just you doesn't have that. I love to have geolocations in photos because I organize them in a manner that makes sense to me. So for example, I have a category for my geolocation. Well, let me just show you. Okay, so now we're in Lightroom in the library module and I have seven photos that I want to geotag and I want to do it quickly. So for example, these five right here were shot in Atlanta during Dragon Con. So the location is in Atlanta. These three right here were shot at the National Harbor in Washington, DC. So we're gonna geotag them. So what I do, <laughs> Man, that's a creepy photo. <laughs> 
So what I do is I go to my map module, right? And now I could type it a search query in there and, and that's the slow way of doing it. Atlanta, and then Atlanta comes up and you gotta do a whole thing. Now, what you do is you go over to saved locations. I don't know if you can see this, saved locations right here and you can create folders. So you can, for example, create a new folder and you can categorize it based on how you shoot. So for me, I like to do cities. I like to have all the cities broken down. I also like to have a personal folder with one cat, one location set as my home. So any photographs that I take at my home, I can drag and drop them right into the little thing that says home and I don't have to do another thing. It's awesome. And then the other thing you could do is categorize stuff like by great sunset shot locations. You could just call it sunset. Now, let me show you. So for, here's Atlanta right here. So what you can do is you can click on this little arrow right here. Okay, I'm gonna click on that. And when you do the map changes, boom, and now you're in Atlanta. Okay, so you can do it quickly. And so you grab the five pictures, boom, and you can drag them. Sound effects optional. Hover it over and drop them right there and they will put them in Atlanta. I recommend you don't go for such precision. Does it really matter if it's three quarters of the way up the street or back down where you shot them in five years from now? Are you gonna care about that? No. So I don't get that specific to it. If it's kind of in the middle of Atlanta, that's good enough for me. And what you can do is you can click on that, highlight it, and then you can see the pictures right there. Another tip you can do is you can create a collection out of photos that are tagged at a specific location. And what you do there is you hover over this, right click, create collection, and now you have a collection of only those photos in that location. Okay, so let's do the next three, boom. There they are. So what I'm gonna do to save time, I'm not gonna look at the map to see where they are and try and drag and drop them. I'm gonna use my fast shortcut. Here's what I do. These pictures were taken all at National Harbor in Washington, DC. It's a beautiful sunset spot. It's in my sunset spot category that I have right here. And there it is right there. I also have Santa Monica Pier, I think. Let me see, is that Santa Monica Pier? Yeah, that's Santa Monica Pier. Okay, so National Harbor is right here. But what I'm gonna do, just to show you this, I'm gonna stay at Santa Monica Pier, and instead I'm gonna grab these, I'm gonna highlight these three photos right here. I'm gonna drag them up, and I'm gonna drop them on National Harbor. Boom. Now, if I click on the arrow, there they are. They've now been added to National Harbor. So you can quickly select a whole bunch of photos, drag them up and drop them into a saved location in your mapping area and all of those photos metadata will be updated with the location information that you specified previously. Okay, so we covered the studio tour. We did a tip and trick on the X-T3. We did a Lightroom demo that I wanted to show you. What else did I do on that live stream? Ah. Okay, I had a viewer comment, and you know who that viewer was? Michael Spatola. You know who he was? He was my wedding photographer. My wedding photographer from 1999 was commenting on my crappy live stream. <laughs> Okay, so in the middle of my live stream, I stopped everything and I went and grabbed my wedding album because I love this guy's photos. And you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put his Instagram page right here. Go check him out, especially if you're in the LA area, you're interested in boudoir photography. Now, what else did I do? Oh, I did one other thing and this was sort of a, a, a tribute. So <laughs> I'm gonna do it right now. Uh, Ken Wheeler angry photographer although he's not angry photographer as much lately he's you know ken is now the kinder gentler photographer so ken um last night i'm sure you didn't see the stream everything blew up nobody i don't think anybody saw this so um as a tribute to you sir i i, I what had happened was all the equipment failed and i had nothing to do i didn't have any demos to show lightroom i couldn't get that to work nothing worked and i brought out a new mascot ken this is in tribute 
to you, okay? <laughs> Is it sharp? Is it sharp? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me present Gear Iguana. It's all about the gear. It's all about the gear. It's all about the gear. All I care about is the gear. When's the X-T4 come out? When's the X-T4 come out? I need a flippy screen. I need a flippy screen. Gear, 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 gear. Some people, um... <laughs> Some people bring masks to work and, um, are very important people in the world. Um, I bring an iguana puppet to work. Just saying, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, for the kind words the other day. That really meant a lot to me. I am not going to be doing live stream uh, as much as I thought I was going to. It's just the problem with live stream is that you re it's very unpredictable with regard to quality and it hinders the way that I can teach. I don't like to have, a lot of times when people do live streams, they spend half the live stream talking about, hey, I'm on a live stream, look at all this. I'm into teaching, your time is valuable, I wanna get the message out to you quickly. I'm not so sure live streams are the way to go. So moving forward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ramp up my regular videos and just put more energy into that. And I will still do live streams, but they're going to be not as often. They're maybe once a month, maybe once every two months, and they're going to be very informal. One camera. I'm not going to try and get fancy. I'll do some Q and A's. I'll do it. You know, how you doing? Okay. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to make this show that I had last night this live stream to make it right, okay? I hope I was able to do that. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it the like and subscribe, and I will definitely see all of you in a video real soon. Have a great rest of your weekend, and take care.